do you believe that's the way you're going to have to beat him? Because obviously, even though he can do a lot of things, he's primarily known as a grappler, a wrestler. Do you believe that's the only way you can win this fight against him? Uh, breaking jaws, bones, cheekbones. Last time I broke his nose with, with six day notice. Um, I'm going to play doctor on his face. I'm just going to slice and dice. Whatever I catch, I'm going to take home with me. You know? I, uh, I see a very violent ending no matter what. I just want to get in there and compete. Jorge, you, you have, obviously you're a very creative, like inventive, resourceful striker, hands, legs, everything. And you also have a deep kind of bag of skills. You can wrestle, you can do all those things, but he is probably with Habib out of the, out of the sport, at least for now. I'd say he's probably the best wrestler, the best guy on the ground in MMA, or at least in the UFC right now. So, so your wrestling seems to me more like I'm staying out of trouble. D are you trying to keep this fight standing up and avoiding going down? And what do you think of his striking skills, which have seemed to me to improve over the last year or two? I just fought him months ago, maybe like eight, nine months ago, and then I just saw his last fight. I still think he's the same robotic, stiff mummy that he was eight, nine months ago. His grappling is good for when he's fighting other grapplers because he can defend very well. But offensively, uh, I'll tell you this much, it's it's nothing special. It's not nothing that I haven't dealt with. I've, I've fought better grapplers like Damian Maya. They can finish guys, you know, guys that are actually mean that are trying to finish you, you know. He, he's a guy that's trying to hold, you know. We saw it evident in my fight that every chance he got to just press me up against a cage and do absolutely nothing but run feet. That's what he chose to do. So I, I don't put his uh, offensive wrestling better than my defensive wrestling. I think he does very well when he competes against other grapplers that he can neutralize their grappling. But offensively, I, I don't think he's that good. And he got tired in our fight, you know. Th there's no way that he takes a fight on six day notice with 20 pounds of cut and I don't finish that guy. That, that, that's my mentality. That's that's how I am. I'm, I'm not going to let you just walk out of here like nothing happened, like you didn't get in the fight. And you know that toenail that's next to your pinky nail? That's the only thing that he bruised on me. That's the only thing that let people know that I was in a fight. That my, my toenail was slightly bruised, so it, it's just a different mindset, me and him. You know, he likes to hug men. I like to knock men out. You do like to knock men out, and I remember when you and I were talking in Vegas, I, t I talked about your style and, and, and what you bring to the table, and I think that if, 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 if you win and you win in a kind of spectacular fashion that you're giving every indication you will win in, you know, when I think about this sport, I think about what Conor McGregor once was. I think about Francis Ngannou and what he is now. And I look at you as a box office attraction. And so I think about it from that perspective. How important is this fight to you as it pertains to your career. I mean, can you tell us where you stand right now as to what this win or win over Usman would mean for your career moving forward in the UFC? When I win, it's everything, you know? Every fight going forward, every fight that I always have in front of me is the most important fight. The one before this one, 10 fights before this one, because it, I wouldn't get here if it wasn't for that fight. Besides the fact that I've been chasing this title for a very long time, it just, um, wow. It's kind of hard to express it, but it, it would mean a lot, you know. If you starting a new chapter in my life, and I can't wait. Uh, Jorge, you keep bringing up the fact, and it's legitimate. I had this much time to cut this much weight, took it at the last minute. He couldn't stop me. I mean, like, he stopped Covington. He stopped guys, real good fighters, recently, but he, he couldn't stop you in spite of the fact that you had very little time to prepare. But can you be specific? What's going to be different about the extra time? How is that going to actually affect what you do in the octagon coming up against him? Well, last time we spoke on the show, I was about 19 pounds, 20 pounds away. Right now, as I stand, I'm, I'm seven pounds away. So all that energy that it's going to take to lose that weight or that I would have used to lose that weight, I'm going to use it on Usman's face to break his face, you know? So he's going to have to go with me from the start to the end at a different pace that he doesn't have built in him. So he's going to immediately go into the hugging mode. And we've been working since the day I competed against this individual. 
I've been working on nothing but neutralizing all that man hugging and foot rubbing stuff. So as soon as we get into the fight, all he has to deal with is me trying to take his head off and him trying to hug me. And we're, we're more than ready for the hugging. You and Ben Askren obviously have a history. You beat him in five seconds at UFC 239. What did you have to say about Askren's loss to Jake Paul this past weekend? And all I got to say is I told you so. I, I told everybody the MMA world was mad at me that, you know, he was representing MMA never. Never not once was he representing MMA. How dare anybody say that guy's representing MMA when every interview he's ever done about strikers has been, I don't need to strike. I could just wrestle these guys to the ground. And he's been saying that on interviews for 10 years plus. So now we're supposed to get behind this guy that doesn't respect mixed martial arts because it is mixed martial arts. It's not just wrestling or just boxing, you know? So obviously when he went in there, I mean, Jorge. I, I called it. I was the first guy to call it. Yes. Jorge, Hello? Jake Paul's been calling out uh, Cormier and different guys. Uh, you're known as a striker. If Jake Paul calls you out, what's your response? He ain't calling me out, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. Max Kellerman, I've been watching you since I'm 13 years old. You, you know what boxing is, what striking is. You've also heard the terms uh, of great white hype and stuff like that. And Jake Paul ain't calling me out, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not happening, you know. And I, I don't mind it. I, I don't mind some easy money, man. But uh, I, I didn't grow up in the Disney Channel. I didn't grow up trying to be a famous movie star or any of that stuff, you know. I grew up in a boxing gym. I grew up in a striking gym and a wrestling mat. Uh, weekends, instead of going to parties and networking with people and finding out who's eating what, I was at a gym. I was running my mouth, getting my road work in. I'm, I'm not going to get called out by a Disney movie star. It's not going to happen. I, I respect what he's doing, that he can come into boxing and bring all these eyeballs in there and stuff like that, but he ain't calling me out. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.